Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're gonna take Ying from China and we're gonna go over the bench press. But first we're gonna have Ying do an introduction. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach you the fundamentals of how to bench press correctly and also how to bench press for longevity. Now, there are gonna be some things on this video that you're going to see that you may not have seen before or may contradict what you have heard. What we are looking for is a very strong bench press but with reduced mileage to the joints. So when we do the bench press, we're going to put ourselves in a strong position but not a joint compromising position. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the feet. So as Ying lays back and gets ready to bench, the first thing that he's gonna do is once his body's in a good position, he is going to drive his feet as hard as he can into the ground. Now, everybody does this different ways and some federations are going to force you to have your, your heels down on the ground. So some of you are gonna to have to bench this way. I'm a preferably a toe bencher, so I bench on my toes. You can do it however you need to for your competition or however feels correct. And if you're just a gym lifter, do whatever feels comfortable. So the first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna drive his feet as hard into the ground as he can. Now that, as you notice, just bridged his body and has locked himself into position. This almost forces you to not be able to raise your butt off of the bench. Now, step two, he is going to keep his sternum as high as he possibly can on the bench press. This is not only gonna shorten the distance, but put him in a very precarious or very good pressing position. Notice that most people are much stronger in the decline than they are on the incline or flat bench. The reason for this being is, is that in this position, you have a shorter distance and you tend to be a little bit stronger. So you wanna to try to get as close to that position as you possibly can when you're laying on a flat bench. The next step will be to come up. Now I'm gonna have Ying sit back up and turn face this way. Now, the next thing that Ying is going to do while he's laying on the bench is he's gonna pinch his shoulder blades. So this is going to not only shorten his range of motion, but it's going to protect the shoulder. In my opinion, the rotator cuff and shoulder gets injured because the shoulders get unlocked and come forward. So when you bench, you do this, and that causes rotator cuff, supra, and infraspinatus to tear. If I stay pinched back, then now it's all arm like a big hydraulic press. So remember what I'm telling you is that the bench press is an arm exercise. If you want your bench press to go up and go up safely, you are going to want to train your triceps very, very hard and make sure your brain knows that that is the, the ideal muscle to go to when you press heavy. So now we understand that this position stays that way. So he's gonna lay back down on the bench. Now he's got his feet pushed into the ground. He's got his shoulder blades pinched. Now the next step is what do we do with the hands? He is going to put his hands right about where he would do a push-up. Now that sounds crazy, but I want you to think about this. So this is where he likes his hands. This is about two fingers in from the knurling, okay? From the circle in the knurling, okay? On both sides. Now if we were to sit Ying back up and we were to put him on the ground, we're gonna watch where he puts his hands on a push-up. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so for you beginners, we're gonna show where you put your hands on the bench press. So Ying is gonna get on the ground and he's gonna put his hands where he feels the strongest. Okay, so he's got his hands put right where he feels the strongest. We're gonna measure first finger to first finger. We are at 26 and a half inches. Okay, so now we're gonna go back up on the bench press bar, and we're gonna see how close we are to 26 and a half inches. Actually, just a hair bit narrower. So he is 24 and a half inches on the scale, right? So if we look, he's actually, his grip's just a hair bit off, so we're gonna make it even. So we gotta, we gotta go this way just a little bit, right here. Come in this way, a little bit right here. Now squeeze the bar as hard as you can. We're at 25 inches. One inch difference from where you feel the strongest in your bench press and the strongest in your push-up. So you don't want, he would not want his hands all the way out here where it would be 36 inches we would want it exactly where we feel the strongest in the push-up. Your body kind of knows where you want to be to be your strongest. It's going to put it there in a push-up. You want to follow that in the bench press. So we're going to let him put his hands back where he feels strongest. Okay, so now we're back at around 24, 25 inches. Now the first thing he's going to do before he even takes the bar out is he's going to squeeze his hands like he's going to a punch. 
okay? So he's gonna squeeze his hands to take the bar out and hold it tight, the back tight. Notice the bar did not come up, so unlock the shoulders. See this? This is very common. He's gonna pull that back and hold it, and now he's gonna squeeze his hands. That's how you start the bench, shortens the range of motion, and also makes your arms a piston. Now what he's thinking about when he comes down is to actually turn his thumb just ever so slightly into the bar. So not now, as he goes down. So as he goes down, he's gonna turn his thumb into the bar. You're gonna see his elbows tuck just a hair. Now when he comes back up, he's gonna release that pressure and come back up. Okay, so he's actually doing this on the way down, just a little bit. So let's do five reps. You notice where he's touching, and notice how straight and vertical the bar path is. It's not arcing back over his eyes. It's staying over his chest. Good. So to reiterate, we need foot pressure first. We need to lock in right here, the sternum. We need to squeeze the shoulder blades and use our arms as pistons. We need to make sure our hands are insanely tight. And then as we go down, we wanna turn our thumbs ever so slightly into the bar and that gives us a hell of a starting point to explode off of the chest. These are some big key points that you are going to need to make your bench press not only go up, but go up safely.